Um, hi, everyone. I'm Ming Nguyen. I uh, hope, hope you've all enjoyed the conference so far. I know I have. Uh, you're going to see lots of photos of roads because I'm a road geek. But uh, this talk isn't really about roads. It's about overpasses. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's early in the conference. Um, I've been mapping for a number of years. And overpass is my favorite tool for understanding OS OSM. Uh, I'm no expert at overpass, but I am a practitioner who learned on the fly through ample trial and error and with help from others. So hopefully by the end of this talk, you'll learn just enough that you'll always keep an overpass tab or two open in your browser. So what is overpass? So uh, starting at the beginning, we often say that OSM is not just a map, but it's a database. There's a lot of data, more than meets the eye. In fact, there's so much of it that there are dedicated services to, get it, to cutting the OSM planet down into smaller extracts so that people can load their area of interest into, uh, onto the computer into a gist tool. But uh, what if you don't need all the data in a given area, just the data that meets some criteria? Every database has a way to query it. And OSM is no exception. It has the Overpass API. It's like a search engine for metadata. Uh, it's also quite black and white. Very, uh, very interesting here. Now, it's, uh, it, this is, this is the, raw, the rawest way to interact with the, uh, the Overpass API. And uh, you will never need to use this tool. Um, however, uh, there is um, what, uh, a little bit of a cryptic uh, code in there that I will explain to you in just a bit. It's called Overpass QL. Now, Overpass Turbo makes it a lot easier to create an Overpass query and make use of the results. By default, it shows results on an interactive map, and clicking a feature inspects all its tags. So this is actually the way I like to, I always like to have this open while mapping. So here's the URL for Overpass Turbo. Um, please make sure to check it out, check it out after the talk, overpassturbo.eu. Before I walk you through Overpass QL, uh, the query language for Overpass API, I'm going to walk you through a simpler wizard syntax uh, that Overpass Turbo uses to generate Overpass QL. Yes, code that generates code. To use a wizard, click the toolbar button, enter your wizard query, and click Build and Run. And then you get this, as well as the results. Think of the wizard syntax as similar to a search engine <laughs> whose map service shall not be named. At its core, <laughs> at its core is the key equals value syntax that mappers uh, often use in conversation or on the wiki. So this query finds schools that are tagged amenity, uh, amenity equals school. Sorry, I need to disable. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, this is, this is all the um, amenity equals school features in this, in this current viewport of the map. Uh, this, this version of the query filters the results down to just school campuses that have been mapped as closed ways or areas. Um, so going back a bit, you see there are a couple dots there that were marked uh, schools that were just marked as points. And those go away when I add and type colon way. You can, uh, you can set the, the type operator to node, way, or relation, depending on the type of, uh, of elements you want to get back. Or you can leave it out if you don't know or don't care. This query expands the results to include university campuses, even if they're mapped as multi-polygon relations. So you see that large campus there is a university, and it has a hole in it. So it was mapped as a relation. Um, so it would, it would not have been caught if I had just set and type colon way. Sometimes you want to match a key, but you don't know the exact value. Uh, so in this case, I wanted to get all this, the high schools. And um, the schools in the area haven't been tagged with like the grades tag, so I wouldn't be able to go off of that. Instead, I'm going off of the name, because I, I can assume that schools are named in English in this area. Uh, so um, this query matches any school with high school in the name. And, and notice how it says name tilde, not name equals. The tilde means that the subsequent string is a regular expression. Now, I'm not going to get into regular expressions here. Uh, it is quite a rabbit hole. Uh, but even if you aren't comfortable writing a regular expression, this operator is actually pretty handy for efficiently listing out multiple values separated by vertical bars or for ma matching a substring, as I am doing here. Up to now, the queries I've shown you have all defaulted to, uh, to searching within the current map viewport, um, which you can change at any time by searching or by, by dragging the map around. Uh, but what if you want to search in a non-rectangular area? So for example, what if you want to search in St. Paul, but not in West St. Paul or South St. Paul? 
I didn't choose Minneapolis because it's actually closer to a rectangle here. But, uh, but you know, this is actually a problem that, uh, that you will encounter very, very frequently. So that's what the in operator is for. Overpass Turbo searches Nominatum, which is the search engine that you, you end up using when you use a search box in osm.org. So it, it, it asks Nominatum for the first place that matches whatever, whatever's in quotes there. And then it limits the query's results to within that, uh, that place's boundary. So the place would need to have, be mapped with a boundary relation. Wildcards are also allowed. So um, with this uh, not equals and then asterisk, uh, this query is going to give us schools that aren't tagged with operators, um, again, in St. Paul. So perhaps this is an opportunity for, for some armchair school district tagging this weekend. There's a, lot, uh, there's a lot of other possibilities with this simpler syntax, this wizard syntax, um, that I'll go over really quickly. Uh, you, can, you can filter by who last touched a feature or, or when they last touched it. Uh, if you uh, are dealing with a tag that has a lot of variation subkeys, um, so if you're doing like um, road-related things that have forward and backwards or borders that have left and right, um, this, this syntax here, with its, beginning with the tilde, lets you match uh, regular expressions on the keys as well as the tags. Uh, and you can also search globally by sticking global at the end. Okay, so we've looked at some examples of wizard queries, uh, but w wizard queries are fairly basic and you can't tweak them really. Um, so I'm gonna show you how these, uh, these wizard queries translate to overpass QL, the, the actual language for querying overpass. Now remember, uh, this, is, this is code that is generated automatically by the wizard that you can use as a starting point. So you don't have to write this all from scratch. So here's that really basic amenity equals que school query again. Uh, and you can see why the query language exists because it's a lot of, a lot of gobbledygook for, for filtering on a single tag. So let's break it down and see what each part means. So that first part that you'll always see with these generated um, overpass QL queries is the settings. Here, it specifies the output format and the timeout. Um, normally, you can leave the settings alone. This is the, the gist of the, of the query. So the, the wizard generated one line for each kind of element that's going to match, node, way, and relation. The first line says, get me the nodes that are tagged to many equal school that happen to fall within the current bounding box of, that I'm viewing on the map. Uh, notice how these three lines are surrounded by parentheses. The parentheses group the, group the lines and union the results into a single set that gets returned. If not for these parentheses, overpass would look for all the nodes using that first line, and then throw that away to look for all the ways, and throw that all away to look for all the relations, and you wind up with only the relations. So finally, at the bottom, the wizard generates these lines that, uh, so this out body, uh, matches the, outputs the matching feature, it's its geometry, it's tags, and then the second line, that uh, greater than sign, recurses down into the nodes that make up that feature, and then the final line uh, will, will output that as well. Um, depending on the query, this can actually be overkill, and, and if you're only looking for nodes, you don't actually have to, to recurse down. Uh, but remember, the, the wizard is generating all this code for you, so if, if this is really hard to remember, don't worry. Um, you normally don't have to muck with it. It just works. So now that we've dissected the simplest possible query, let's see what all the, the other generated queries look like. So here I've added type colon way, and you can see that the query actually got simpler. Um, it's only looking for ways now, uh, not for nodes and relations, and that can actually make the query run a little faster, um, depending on what you're searching for. So if you know you only care about one type of element, you should always add the type operator. Uh, here is where I've added the university and, and, and multi-polygon relations. Uh, and we can see that the OR operator adds more lines to the query. And so depending on what you're searching for again, it could actually slow things down if you have a lot of ORs. Uh, I'm doing this regular expression search and you can see how the tilde in the query, um, uh, the, the wizard query language translates to a tilde in these three lines in the overpass QL. So instead of saying name equals whatever, it's name tilde high school. And here's that in operator. So this is a little more complex and I'll walk you through it. You see how that uh, geocode area line, uh, the second line down, um, that's the special overpass turbo syntax. 
uh, as I mentioned, it searches Nominatum. And what it does after it gets that result back from the search engine, from Nominatum, uh, it will replace this line with uh, that, that result's area ID, which is sort of like a way ID or a relation ID, something, something fairly permanent to, uh, to identify that, that place by. And um, that hyphen greater than sign, that arrow operator, will store that result, that area, into a, uh, into a named set, or you can think of it as like a local variable that you can refer to later. So here it's called search area, and it's referred to by each of those three lines later on, uh, instead of the B box. Uh, and finally, the last example is, uh, is where I said operator not equal to asterisk. And you can see that it translates into a regular expression. Um, this is a little bit of a quirk of overpass QL. Um, to, to say that uh, something is not set, you actually end up saying that it's uh, you know, uh, not set to a regular expression. But again, this is something that uh, you would normally just type into the wizard. So now that I bored you with all that programming minutia, uh, you might be wondering how you would use the results beyond the interactive map that you get by default. In the toolbar next to the, uh, next to the run button in Overpass Turbo are the share and export buttons. The share button generates a permalink to the query. So that's really useful if um, you, know, you want to like, share the results with, uh, with a colleague. And um, you want, these aren't like permanent link in, in terms of the results being permanent. Uh, it's not a snapshot of the results, just a snapshot of the query. So it is always fresh. The export button is actually a treasure trove. Um, you can export the results in several formats, like GeoJSON or KML, uh, and, or you can uh, click on map to generate a static map for sharing. So that would actually be a snapshot of the results. A um, little further afield, exported overpass results. So if you, like, if you export it as GeoJSON, for example, um, you can import it into several OSM-related tools. So uh, for example, you can query overpass for um, problematic tags. Uh, maybe some typos or some other things that need attention, uh, and then export the results to Map Roulette, which makes it easy to coordinate a campaign to fix those things with others. At last year's State of the Map US, I gave a workshop about uh, building a heat map in Mapbox Studio using overpass results. So the example was uh, I mapped a bunch, or uh, the community mapped a bunch of buildings, and I wanted to see um, roughly the geographic distribution. Um, the workshop wasn't recorded, unfortunately, but a written version is available at this URL, tinyurl.com slash SOTMUS 18 heatmaps2. Uh, did you know that Jossum has an expert mode? Um, so if you go into preferences and they enable expert mode, and I, I admit to not knowing what else it turns on, uh, <laughs> the, the download dialog gains, gains a tab where you can download uh, features matching an overpass query. So um, it's really useful if, if you want to make systematic edits in an area of interest. Um, like, maybe I realize I've been misspelling everything with in American English, and I just want to change it back to British English. Uh, and I don't have to leave Jossum to do that. So far, I've shown you what the wizard can generate in terms of uh, overpass QL. But the reason I showed you that language in the first place is that it's a starting point. You can, the, the language can do a lot more. For example, Recursion statements and filters let you drill down into a way's nodes uh, or a relation's members and drill, in, uh, drill up into the ways containing a node. So, so this query here finds footways that intersect roadways, possibly candidates for crosswalk tagging. I'm going to walk you through that now. So first, it finds the roadways. That's pretty straightforward. It's, it's highways that aren't footways. Then it recurses down into the nodes forming those ways. So this is node parentheses w, and there's actually a, a, uh, a set of these codes that you can do to recurse in different ways. Then it recurses back up to the footways that incorporate those nodes. There's also an around filter that finds features within a certain radius of another set of features. Um, I didn't go over it, but the wizard has a, like a, a near operator that's like, find me all the restaurants near uh, some, some specific place. This is different. This is uh, find, me all, you know, some, uh, find me all the features matching some criteria that match, uh, that are near all the other features matching another set of criteria. 
So in this case, I'm finding buildings near, near tornado sirens. And obviously, the tornado sirens don't have names. First, it finds the, the siren nodes. So emergency equals siren. Then it finds the building ways with, within 100 meters of those nodes. And you can uh, customize the distance. So there isn't a not near filter. But we can achieve the same effect using a different statement. And this different statement can be used for a number of different purposes. Uh, the que this query finds flagpoles that are not in front of fire stations. So first we find all the flagpoles, uh, and we save it as the flagpole set. So that's that arrow operator again. Then we find the fire stations. So they could be mapped as nodes or ways. Then we find the flagpoles near those fire stations. So in this case, I'm saying if it's near the fire station, if it's within 100 meters. Citation needed. Uh, I save that set also as fire poles, because I, uh, it was late, and I couldn't think of a better name for a variable. <laughs> then we subtract one from the other. And uh, that syntax is it's, it's surrounded in parentheses, just like when you're unioning two sets together. But it's the first set minus the second set. Um, just pay attention to where the semicolons are. Uh, there's, there's plenty of other things. Um, so there's an if evaluator syntax that lets you uh, decide whether a feature should be mapped on, uh, sorry, returned on an individual basis or not. Um, so this query finds turn lane uh, ways that, it finds turn lane ways, but it only returns a turn lane way that is over 300 meters long. Uh, it turns out that most of these long ones are center turn lanes. So it's not quite the same as a normal turn lane. That's why they're so long. Um, there's actually a number of these uh, evaluators that you can use. Um, uh, so uh, those are documented on a, in a link that I'll show you later. Uh, Overpass also has some built-in statistical features that are handy, handy for alternative input, uh, outputs. So for example, instead of outputting all the bike lanes and sharrows themselves, uh, how about summing up all their lengths and outputting the total, uh, uh, total length in JSON format? Uh, it turns out there are just shy of uh, four, 500 centerline miles of uh, bikeways mapped in the, in the Twin Cities. Uh, so a final note about performance. As you play with overpass, you'll quickly run into situations where it can't respond to your request in a reasonable amount of time and times out. Um, the reason is that the overpass server is a community resource, uh, and um, they don't want uh, any, any single user to monopolize that service by accident. So um, if you run into a timeout, the first thing you should do is make sure that your filters aren't overly qualified uh, with too many details. So each additional filter creates uh, more, more work for the server, not less. Uh, and that's something that um, might be counterintuitive if you're coming from some other tools. So for example, if you want to find all the McDonald's, just search for, for example, name equals McDonald's but not name equals McDonald's and building equals retail and memory equals fast food and cuisine equals burger and takeaway equals yes. Um, and uh, so if, if, you've, if you're pretty sure that your query is formulated correctly, uh, it's already pretty performant uh, for what it's doing, then um, you can increase the timeout beyond a minute. You can also, if you're dealing with tons of data, like you're looking for all the buildings in a certain county, um, you can increase the memory allocated to that query. Um, so this, uh, this number is apparently one gigabyte. Uh, in base two. Um, but if you increase either of these things, uh, just be aware that you are going to more easily run into rate limiting. Um, so again, to prevent abuse, uh, your IP address is going to be throttled to only allow one or two uh, long, long queries of this nature at a time. Uh, so this, this page is your current status for your current IP address, uh, kind of a handy tool. Uh, I think that's enough confusion for one day, honestly. Um, hopefully, I've piqued your interest, uh, and you'll try your hands at, uh, at using Overpass for your day-to-day -day mapping needs. Um, I, uh, I want to spend a special thanks to Martin, uh, Roland, MMD, and others who, who work on, on these tools on both Overpass API and Overpass Turbo. Um, they've been really useful to me. Uh, and uh, I've linked to a couple of different resources here. One uh, that's just a site specifically about learning Overpass. Another that is the official documentation, which has examples and a full language reference. Um, I, I also keep these uh, bookmarked all the time because uh, there's just so, many, so much into the syntax. Um, if you have any questions, please join OSMUS Slack and ask in the Overpass channel. 
Uh, and also, or also just feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm happy to try to answer your questions. So thank you. Do we have time for questions? OK. Yes. Yes. It is possible to run your own um, overpass uh, turbo or overpass server, uh, and you would load in a, a planet that you download as well. Um, I would I would recommend uh, asking in the overpass you know overpass channel or some US Slack because uh, there are some folks there who have done this in the past and can advise you on that. Yes. Yes. Um, the question is whether there's any kind of validation or linter for writing overpass QL. Um, so the overpass turbo um, editor that I that I showed you, uh, it will. Um, so first, if you if you write invalid uh, overpass QL, it will uh, it will return an error and it also highlight um, what what's wrong. So um, that's it, you have to do some trial and error, uh, but it's not it's not like totally real time, but it's enough to get you going. Yes? I wrote some queries where I got nothing on the map, mm -hmm. and I, it just turned out that I was using the wrong out parameters. Okay. So flipping over to GeoJSON, I saw that the data was there, but just not the points to draw. So the okay. data was there, it just wasn't drawing the yes. direction. Yeah, so the, the comment is that um, it's possible to write a, a query that, um, that Either returns results in a place that you aren't looking, or it returns uh, just data that isn't isn't drawable on the map. Um, so for the first thing, if if you're if you have a query that returns data that's not in in the part of the map you're looking at, there's a button to to fit to the results, um, and then there's also uh, a data tab that will show you the the, the raw results in GeoJSON well, JSON format. Um, uh, if you stick to the queries that are they're generated by the wizard. Um, those will always be uh, be you know, visible on the map. Uh, if you mess with some of those uh, later lines about like what you're outputting, um, that's not necessarily true. Uh, and so um, I would, in that case, uh, recommend looking at the documentation. Um, there's there's quite a bit of documentation about the various options for outputting. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, it's much easier to run into timeouts if you, uh, if you it I mean, it depends on what you're, you're querying, right? So you could query globally for, uh, say, all the tornado sirens, and, and you'll probably be able to get that without a, a, a timeout, because they're all nodes, and there's not that many of them. But, um, but like if you're looking for buildings, for example, um, even looking at all the buildings in an urban county uh, will probably run into a timeout. So you need to increase that timeout. Yes? Can you query OSS? Uh, to a limited extent. Um, so the uh, question is whether you can query OSM history. Um, so uh, on the surface, um, first of all, uh, there, is, there is enough metadata in Overpass that it can, uh, you can match things based on when they were last edited. Um, that's the most common need for history. Uh, and there, is, there are some syntaxes that are spelled on the, spelled on the documentation for uh, comparing the state of OSM between two different dates uh, using what's called ADDIC. Um, it, it, it takes longer, so again, you're more likely to run into timeouts, but uh, there is that functionality. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, the question is, when you, when you query within a, a boundary or a bounding box, I suppose, um, uh, what's the criteria? What does it match uh, you know, a, bill, a building that's entirely within or versus partially within? Um, that does depend on your query. If you're saying, for example, buildings within St. Paul, um, it's, going to, uh, it's going to, I believe, match uh, buildings that intersect. Um, and if that's not the case, there are, there are different ways of, of getting about, you know, customizing that based on like whether you're querying for nodes within the building and things, things like that. So recursion, yes. In the wizard, you could save your query. You can bring it up again. Yes. Is there a way to bring it up again and then just add to the wizard statement or is it just going to be the full overpass? So uh, the question, as I understand it, is if, if you... Um, a wizard query. Mm -hmm. And you save it. Yes. 
Yeah, so over, in Overpass Turbo, if you enter a wizard query um, and then and then save it, uh, or you, you, you run it, um, and click wizard again, it brings up the last, the last wizard uh, query that you had. Um, it's, however, it's not the case, so uh, if you were to enter something in the wizard and then like, tweak the Overpass QL somehow, uh, and then bring up the wizard again, it won't update because there's so much more that you can express in Overpass QL. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yes, in the back. So I know that a lot of times when I'm doing queries, I'm going to export something to module and skip skip the main and skip something else. Mm -hmm. um, will opt-ins for memory help run all or is there some other workaround? Or you might want to just download a hot place. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there are definitely limits to how much you can, uh, you know, at some point you're hitting, you're hitting browser limits too, uh, you know, in terms of your browser performance, how much data it can deal with. Um, so the overpass API is a REST API that you can call, uh, you know, from a command line that isn't subject to all those same, some, same limitations. Um, there, ultimately, there is a maximum amount of memory that a query can, can use. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if you're doing this for a huge amount of data, um, you might consider setting, setting up your own uh, overpass server, or um, you might download an extract and use a tool like Osmium to, to do more efficient querying. Um, it's, it's a different tool, different kind of options, um, but it's, it's another tool in your arsenal. Yep. Uh, any other questions? All right, thank you very much.